Hi, and welcome to the Division of Education, Innovation and Energy's e-learning program. I am Mr. Atwell, and today we'll be focusing on consumer arithmetic, the money mathematics. So as we get into this topic, again, we must remember our basic arithmetic. We must be able to add, to subtract, to multiply, and divide. And we must have a good, a good understanding and be reasonably comfortable with working with fractions, decimals, and percentages. If we are struggling with these, then I will suggest that you take some time and you practice, that you get comfortable, because we're going to be meeting a lot of these in these topics. So for today, we want to begin to focus on the basics. So we're going to look at definitions of various consumer arithmetic terms. We're going to be looking at some calculations involved with them and hopefully, and hopefully be able to solve problems involving these consumer arithmetic terms. Now, let's go. Time is money, right? Right. So when it comes to the basic terms, which we already know because we've been doing it for all of our lives, the cost price, is the cost of something. It is the cost or the amount of money that must be spent to obtain an item. And in many cases, it also will include the cost to maintain the item. So it's not just about obtaining the item, but it's also about maintaining the item. So let's say I go on eBay, right, and I see an item, and the item is listed as $4, and I'm like, whoo, that cheap boy. And then in the little corner below, you see shipping and handling is $27.94. What is the cost of, of that item? Is the cost of the item really $4? No, it's not. Because it will cost us to buy it and to ship it. So the overall cost price here is not $4, but it will be, when we add them, $31.00. 94 cents and that's just the cost to ship it now the cost price again you will have various factors affecting it but again what we need to remember it is the cost to obtain and in most and a lot of times to also maintain the item now the selling price if you're a business person or if you've ever sold anything before is the price you sell it for so is a price that you are comfortable giving up the item for. So let's say I have this spec. And I'm saying, you know what? If someone was to offer me $50 for this, I would gladly take it. And here, come, here you come and be like, I will give you $50 for it. You know what I'll say? Deal. I take your 50 and I give you this spend. It means I would have sold this spend for $50 and that would have been my selling price. So the selling price is the amount that you sold, sell an item for. Now, all of us know that whenever we're buying and selling items, if we're buying a phone and selling it back, if we're buying shoes and selling it back, if we're buying groceries and selling it back, all of us want to make a profit. No one wants to sell something and lose money. So a profit is made whenever an item is sold for more than it costs. So it is the difference between the selling price and the cost price. So if your selling price is greater than your cost price, or if you sell it for more than it costs for you to obtain and maintain it, guess what? You made a profit. But if, it, but if you sell it for less than it costs to um, obtain it and maintain it, then you would have made a loss. And nobody wants to make a loss because we don't like to lose. Who likes to lose? Let's be real here. No one likes to lose. And we especially don't like to lose money which is why it's important for us to understand the basics. But I know you already know the basics, so we're going to move on a bit. So if we say that cost price, and wherever we see cost price, we're going to write CP. And wherever we see selling price, we're going to write SP. And profit, just a P by itself, and loss, and L by itself, we're going to see some equations that we already know. Remember what we said, right? If the selling price, is more than the cost price, then we would make a profit. So to find out how much profit we made in dollars, all we would have to do is selling price minus the cost price. Now, if perchance you did something and you did 
lose money to find out how much you would have lost, it will simply be the cost price minus the selling price. And similarly, if you were to make the selling price the subject of these formulae, selling price would be the cost price plus the profit, and selling price would have been the cost price minus the loss. Simple mathematics, right? Nothing too hard here because we've been doing this for all our lives. Yeah? Now let's go. So here we have a question, and let's write in some values and see if we can solve them, right? Because it's just about understanding the concept. So Jim spends some amount of money to buy a car. How much do you think Jim bought this car for? Uh, let me say 15,000. All right, all right. I know some of you all said that. Don't ask me how I know. Right? He then spends some amount of money on repairs and upgrades. So he bought the car, and then he carried the car by the garage. He had to go and make sure the engine good. He had to go and change the oil. He had to go and change, he had to go and change the spark plug. He had to go and make sure that everything good with the, with the, um, the chassis and with the air condition and make sure it's nice up. Then he had to carry it in the body shop to do some painting and straightening and everything. So let me say he spent an next 4000 on that. And then he's now going to sell it. Now he spent fifteen grand for the car. And he just said, you know what, I'm going to fix it up. And then here comes somebody saying, watch, I will give you 18,000 for the car. And he's saying in his mind, oh gosh, I spent 15,000 for the car and I'm making 18,000, I'm making money. But is he making money? Let's go. What was his cost price? Well, this is how much it costs to obtain it, 15 grand. But then to upgrade it and maintain it, it costs the next four grand. So in all, it would have cost him to the point of selling, $19,000. And then he came and sold it for $18,000. So did he make a profit? No, in fact, he lost money. He made a loss of how much? The difference, which is $1,000. And this is why it's important to understand that the cost price is not simply the price to get the item, but it's all the money that you also invest into the item. So if you are a business person and you want to sell something, you have to take into consideration the amount of money it took to get it and the amount of money you would have put into it in order to then make a profit. Let's take a let's set of numbers. So let's say that Jim didn't make such a bad, a bad business transaction, right? So you still buy the car, you buy the car for 15 grand. And he still spend the same $4,000 to fix it up. And then the man offer him 18, and he said, no, 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 no. That is too little bit of money. I want 30,000 for this. And the man say, oh, gosh, I do have 30,000, I only have 25. And he say, take it for 25. Now, the gym make a profit. The cost price is still the 19,000. His selling price is now 25,000. Don't mind the, high, the handwriting, right? Let me write that over for you. 20, 25,000. It means that he did make a profit and a profit of how much? The difference, right? 25 grand minus 19 grand, he made a profit of? $6,000. Simple mathematics, right? Nothing too hard. But again, what we have to understand is that the cost price will be the cost to buy it or obtain it and also to maintain it. Now let's go. Let's just quickly erase this board and move on. So now we have some percentage calculations involved. Now, Cost price, selling price, profit and loss can also be represented by percentage values. And many times, businesses will rather represent their numbers by percentages rather than the actual figures. So we need to understand what the percentages mean. Now for the basic mathematics, which, we're, which, which is what we're doing now, the first thing I want us to remember and understand is that our fundamental figure, our original figure, is the cost price. How much ever it took to obtain the item. So that's why we see that the cost price is 100%, right? That is what is going to be our denominator value for all of our percentage calculations. 
So when it comes to the profit or the percentage profit, we're talking about the percentage profit in relation to the cost price. So percentage profit will be the profit over the cost price multiplied by 100%. If we're talking about a percentage loss, we're talking about a percentage loss in relation to the cost price. Again, loss over cost price multiplied by 100%. If we're talking about the percentage selling price, we're talking about the selling price in relation to the cost price. So it's selling price over cost price multiplied by 100%. Now again, if we know selling price is cost price plus profit, then the percentage selling price will be the percentage cost price, which is 100 always, plus the percentage profit. Uh, if it was a loss, then the percentage selling price will be 100 minus the percent loss. Now this may seem a little bit like, what? But again, as we do the examples, you would see that you already know the math. This is just putting some criteria and putting some equations to what you already know. So let's look at this. Jane sold her car for a blank the price she bought it for. So let's say that Jane sold her car for 1.25 times the price she bought it for. If she sold it for 25,000, did she make a profit or a loss and how much did she buy it for? Now, this may seem as though like, what? But let's read the question as it is. Jane sold her car for 1.25 times, and I just put an X here to represent the times, the price she bought it for. If she sold it for 25,000, did she make a profit or a loss? Now, this 1.25 is a decimal fraction, yeah? Which actually represents, if we were to convert it to percentage, 125%. So Jane sold her car for 125% times the price she bought it for. So that makes this our percentage selling price. Again, she sold it for 1.25 times the price she bought it for. So that means she buy it, she multiply that number by 1.25, and then sold it for that. So it makes this percentage 125% our percent selling price. So we have our percent selling price being 125%. And we have the actual selling price being 25,000. Let me just make that five here a little better. Nice. Now, if ever your percent selling price is more than 100%, you made a profit. And if ever your percent selling price is less than 100%, you made a loss. So because her percent selling price is 125% and percent selling price is 100 plus percent profit, it means that we already know, without having to do any other further calculations, that the profit was how much? Percent profit would have been 25%. But we don't even need to calculate that because they didn't ask us for that, right? What did they ask us for? They asked us for the cost price. So, let's go. We know the percent selling price and the selling price, which means that we can use our formula that has what we're looking for and what we have. So if we know that percent selling price is selling price over cost price times 100%, that means 125% is equal to the selling price over the cost price multiplied by 100. And we just have to make cost price the subject of our formula. Now, again, because we're dividing on this side and we want to make cost price the subject of the formula, it means that we'll have to multiply. So then it will be 125 times the cost price, which will be equal to 
25,000 times 100. If you are struggling with, with um, subject of the formula and transposition, I would suggest that you go and you practice it. Right? It's important to practice it, especially when it comes to multiple choice. Because many times, some of the, many times the questions on algebra will involve some level of transposition. So you should try your best to get comfortable with that. Now, to make cost prices to become the formula, it would just be this 25,000 times 100 over 125. And let's do that mathematics real quick. 125 into this will be 200, and then 200 by 100, the cost price was 20,000. And you can check the mathematics. If the cost price is 20,000, yeah? And she sold it for a profit of 25%. Remember, we already established that the profit, the profit percentage was 25%. And how did we establish that? We established it by this number. Because she sold it for 1.25 times, right? The 100% would be the cost price, and the additional will be the profit. And the additional of the 125% is 25%. 25% of 20,000, if you don't know it, you can pull out the calculators real quick, do 25 over 100, multiply by 20,000, you will get that that answer is 5,000. And then 20,000 plus 5,000 is 25,000. So you see, working backwards, working forwards, the numbers remain the same. And again, it's always important to remember that when you're finding your percentage values, your cost price is the one that goes below. Your cost price is the one that goes below, which means that if you have to find your cost price, you will need to transpose. Let's see if we can think of a different number, different values. So let's take it, let's take it a little differently. So let's just erase the board for now. That one, I can feel some of you already being like, what? But that's fine. You know why? Because we're learning. We're learning. Take our time. Let's go over. Let's try a different one. Let's see if we can understand what happened. Now, for this one, let me use a different number. Jane sold her car for 110% of the price she bought it for. Yeah? If she sold it for $33,000, did she make a profit or a loss? Well, because our percentage selling price is more than 100, it means that she made a profit. And once your percentage selling price is more than 100%, it means that you're making a profit. Now, how much did she buy the car for? Here we have our selling price, percentage selling price, and here we have our actual selling price. And how are they related? The percentage selling price is, sorry, the percentage selling price is the selling price over the cost price multiplied by 100 which would make the cost price, the selling price, over the percentage selling price times 100. So that will be 33,000 So let me write that here. That will be 33,000 over 110% times 100%. Percent values cancel out. Uh, one zero cancel out one zero, 11 into 33 is three, so that means this number is 300. So then that figure is 30,000. She bought the car for 30,000 and sold it for 33,000. So she made a profit 
as we already know, of 10%. And how would we have calculated a profit, a percentage profit? We would have found the profit first, which is just 33,000 minus 30,000, and then put that over our 30,000, so that would be 3 over 30,000, and multiply by 100, which is 10%. Yeah? Great. Now, let's erase. Sorry. And let's see if we can find a different example. We. Nice. Let's go. So Jim sold his stove for some amount of money. And as a result, he had a something of this amount. Calculate the cost price of his stove. Well, so let's say Jim is selling a stove. Jim is selling a nice, a nice stove. And let's say he's selling a stove for $3,500. Yeah? And as a result of selling it for that price, let's say Jim was wise, so he made a profit. And let's say he made a profit of, give me a number. $500. All right. So we take it simple first, right? We win $500. Calculate the price, the cost price of his stove. Well, this shouldn't be hard at all, right? He sell it for $3,500. I make a profit of $500. So to find the cost price, how will we find the cost price? What is this? This is the selling price. And this is the profit. So the cost price will be the selling price minus the profit. Again, that's by transposition. So then that will be 3,500 minus 500. Let's write that properly. My bad. So now will be 3,500 minus 500, which is equal to 3,000. Simple mathematics, yeah? So let's take it up a step. So let us see that he made a profit, but instead of selling it for 35,000, let's, 3,500, sorry, let's say that he sold it for 4,000. Yeah? Cool? And he made a profit of 25%. Calculate the cost price of his stove. What do we have here? We have our selling price, which is 4,000. We have our percentage profit, which is 25%. And we need to find the cost price. Now, do we have the information currently to directly find the cost price. No, we don't. I know some of us are thinking, well, so all you had to do is just multiply 25% of 4,000 and get 1,000 and take it away and get 3,000. But no, that's not correct. And why is that not correct? Because this is not the cost price. This is the selling price. So in order to work it out, we need to find the percentage selling price which is easy to find. And why is that easy to find? Because we know the percentage selling price is 100 plus the percent profit. So it means that the percentage selling price is 125%. Yeah? So then, the cost price, we would then get it from using this formula. Percent selling price, is equal to the selling price over the cost price multiplied by 100%, which would then be mean that the cost price is the selling price over the percent selling price multiplied by 100%. Per selling price is 4,000. That's 4,000 over 125 multiplied by 100%. Yeah? So let's go. 
Let's look at our mathematics and let's see how fast we can break it down to get an answer that we can work with. Now, again, now, it's important to recognize that in multiple choice mathematics, you do not, you are not allowed to use calculators. So it means that you must be comfortable with your addition, subtraction, multiplication, and divisions. Yeah, you have to get comfortable with it. And I would strongly suggest that as you practice questions and as you look for answers, that you practice actually mentally working it out, writing on the paper, right? Writing on a piece of paper, trying to do your calculations, because that is going to help you to understand what you're going to have to do, especially when it comes to your exams and also going forward. So let's go. 4,000 divided by 125 times 100. Well, let's just break it down into numbers that we could work with, right? So this is 4, this is 5, and then 5 into 4,000, that's 800, and then 8 by 4 is 3,200. So that means that the cost price was $3,200. And please, recognize it, right? Because if you had done what you may have thought to do initially, you realize that your answer would have been $3,000, but then that would have been... Incorrect, because you would have been using the selling price as the cost price, and that is not what we do. We have the cost price is what we're trying to find. So to find the cost price, we transpose our formula, and we solve our question. And now, if you want to, you can work backwards and see what you're going to get. If this is your cost price, then 25% of this number, or a quarter of 32, is 800. Yeah? What is 3,200 plus 800? 4,000. If you had done it with your 3,000 that you may have worked out before, you would realize that you would not get back 4,000. And that should prompt you to realize that your answer would have been incorrect. And please, when it comes to multiple choice, there's very, it's very possible that you're going to have the right answer and a wrong answer that you could work with. Very possible that seven, that it's very possible that 3,000 and 3,200 would have both been options. And if you did not do your right calculation, you would have gotten the question wrong. So please understand, work through your steps. It's not a guessing game. You are more than able to do excellently on this examination.